Hi everyone, I'm State Senator Sharon Hewitt. Many of you have asked for some help in understanding the eight constitutional amendments that are on your ballot. And so I thought I would try to give you my perspective in everyday language as to what these amendments are all about. You know, our Constitution was approved by voters in 1974, almost 50 years ago. And since then, we have added 203 amendments. At some point, I think we need a constitutional convention to clean up our Constitution, to put just those things in the Constitution that, that need to be there, all of the other details in statute, and also to better realign the responsibilities of the state government and local government, giving much more authority to local government. But that's a story for another day. Let me tell you about the eight constitutional amendments in hopes of bringing a little bit of clarity to what these are all about. The First Amendment uh, deals with increasing the cap on investments in, in seven different funds. Right now, we can invest about 35% in stocks. This amendment, if you vote yes, will allow the treasurer to invest up to 65% of those funds in stocks and other equities. Amendment number two uh, deals with property tax exemptions for disabled veterans. If you vote yes on this amendment, it will give additional property tax exemptions to disabled veterans and their surviving spouses. Amendment number three deals with civil service employees who are um, in the immediate family of a candidate running for office. Current law prohibits that civil service employee, think about a fireman, a policeman, or a school teacher, from participating in campaign events for their immediate family member. So for example, that would prevent them from appearing in a family photo or perhaps attending a campaign event. This amendment, if you vote yes, would allow that immediate family member to participate in those types of activities. Amendment number four deals with waiving of water charges. If you vote yes for this amendment, uh, a political subdivision, meaning those that are responsible for managing water charges, could waive charges for water uh, lost due to damage to the water delivery infrastructure if the damage is not the result of actions taken by the homeowner. Those result, as you can imagine, if there is, let's say, a hurricane or some other reason why your water system is damaged, it could result in really high fees uh, for that homeowner. This would allow a political subdivision or th that entity managing the water to use some discretion in adjusting their water bills. Amendment number five, I believe, is the most important amendment of those that we're going to vote on, although it's probably also the most confusing. I believe by voting yes on Amendment five, we will ultimately pay less taxes, and here's why. Current law requires that property be reassessed at least every four years. After an assessment, the taxing authority cannot for the next four years raise your millages any higher than the highest in the last four years. What this causes taxing authorities to do is in year four, right before a property assessment, they will roll their millages forward to the maximum that was approved by the voters, which in many cases is more than what they have been using as their millage leading up to that point. It's more than what they need to operate their, their taxing district. And then the property is assessed, and after that, they will reduce the millage again. But there's a spike in year four in our current system. With this amendment, if this amendment passes, it eliminates the looking at tax millages on a four-year basis, and it will allow those taxing authorities to use the maximum approved by voters you know, whenever they need to. But for sure, in the current system, the way it's working, for all practical purposes, they are hitting you for the max 
in year four right before a property assessment. Therefore, I personally believe that by voting yes on this amendment that we will ultimately pay less taxes. And then, as you know, there are always public hearings. Anytime a taxing authority plans to roll their millage forward, they have to have a public hearing and explain to the public why they're doing so. Hope you understood that. It's very complicated, but this is supported by all of the tax assessors in the state and something that they have been working on for many years to bring forward as good tax policy. Amendment number six deals strictly with Orleans Parish. Amendment number six would limit the amount of um, tax increases that residents would pay to 10% after their homes or businesses have been reassessed. In many cases in Orleans Parish, properties have been undervalued for a long time and their property assessments have been sky high, which has been sticker shock for many residents. This amendment, should it pass, will allow the taxing authorities in Orleans Parish to ratchet the homeowner's uh, property taxes by a maximum of 10% per year for several years until they get to their um, full appraised value. Constitutional Amendment number seven deals with the issue of involuntary servitude. The current Constitution prohibits involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime. This amendment as drafted would prohibit involuntary servitude except in the lawful administration of criminal justice. The, uh, the author of this amendment initially intended for the amendment to be more limiting than the current language in the Constitution, but upon further inspection, he now believes that it actually broadens uh, the, the application for involuntary servitude, which was not his intent. So the author is asking that we vote no on Constitutional Amendment number seven. Constitutional Amendment number eight, the last amendment on your ballot, would uh, freeze the property tax rates for the disabled without them having to go back and recertify their income. Current law would require them to certify their income. Should you vote yes on this amendment, it would allow the disabled not to have to recertify their income as is currently done for those that are over 65. We've talked about a lot of constitutional amendments and they can be pretty confusing. There are two great nonpartisan groups that have written extensively about each of these eight amendments. One is the Public Affairs Research Council and you can find them at parlouisiana.org and the other is at cable.org it's the Council for a Better Louisiana. These are two great resources if you want to read more about those eight amendments. It was great talking to you today. I hope I've helped a little bit. Talk to you again real soon. God bless.